Okay, this is a process used for commissioning a storage hot water service. You'll be provided with this sheet. It would be a good idea if you could memorise the commissioning steps from this sheet. It will make the whole commissioning process a lot easier. First, you need to test your neon tester to ensure that it is working as it should. Uh, it's no good using a neon tester that is not working or the batteries are flat. So even if there is stray current there, it's not going to pick it up. You test your neon tester as shown here on a known power source. Then you go about testing the copper pipe work with the neon tester, make sure it doesn't liven up in several places. And then you also must make sure you test the casing of the appliance to make sure that isn't become live somehow. You then need to attach your bonding straps. You need to attach your bonding straps so if there is any electrical current in the copper pipe work, the bonding straps will bridge this stray electrical current. Uh, as soon as you undo that gas valve and there is electrical current there, you'll become the bridge for the electrical current to pass through, giving you an electric shock. So that's the idea of bonding straps. They take the, uh, they bridge any electrical current that may be in the pipe work. Then you need to go about disconnecting the, the gas valve. Uh, make sure you've got a shifter on the actual body of the valve and before you disconnect the nut, what you don't want to be doing is putting pressure on the pipe work when, when you're undoing that nut. Disconnect the valve fully as shown here. Uh, disconnect it fully because you need to purge the air and gas mixture out of the line. And you also, if there's any dirt or grit in the fitting line, you don't want to blow that into the appliance. So disconnect the valve fully as shown here. You only need to turn the valve on slightly just to blow the air gas mixture out and any swarf that is in there. Do uh, rejoin the gas valve. And as soon as you've done that, make sure you turn the gas valve back on and you bubble test the, the join. If you don't do this, it, uh, it could leak and it, uh, it will leak till there's no other chance of testing it. So if it leaks, it, it will leak till it blows up a, blows up a hair. Now this is the appliance control, it's called a Eurostat control. Uh, with this type of control, you can't adjust the main burner pressure and you can't adjust the pilot light flame. If one of those two are incorrect, you need to uh, get the buy a whole new control. First, before I connect the manometer, I always start the appliance first to get rid of any gas and air mixture that may be left in this pipe. What you don't want to do is uh, connect the appliance, then struggle to trying to light the appliance. Puts undue pressure in. So first you make sure it's on the sparker. Then push that down, push that knob down and hit the ignition button. This will light the pilot light that's in turn heating the uh, thermocouple. You then turn the uh, turn the control on to 5 or 6 so the main burner comes on. Once this has been done you can turn the appliance to the off position again and turn the gas valve off. I turn the whole appliance off again uh, because Here's your supply point screw and here is your test point screw. If you by accident take the supply pressure ten test point screw out uh, and the gas valve is on, uh, there'll be gas spewing out of this screw. So to save that accident happen in the exam, you shut the whole appliance down before you go taking test point screws out. So here I've taken that test point screw out. Make sure your manometer is in such a place where it's uh, not going to fall over and the rubber hose is not near any flame or such. It can uh, connect the hose as shown. Once the manometer is connected to the appliance, you must uh, for no reason leave the appliance. Uh, if for some reason you do have to leave the appliance, you need to make sure you put, it, uh, put the test point screw back in and disconnect the manometer. Uh, blokes have failed for this in the past. Now you need to relight the to find the test point burner pressure. You need to relight the appliance. As shown here, turn the turn the appliance onto about five or six, so the main burner comes on, and this will give you your burner burner pressure. Here it's reading about about one kPa. On the back of the panel that comes on the hot water service uh, with the instructions, it gives you the test point pressure there. So it's meant to be meant to be one kPa. If the if the test point pressure was five percent lower or five percent higher than that one kPa, 
you would uh, you would need to uh, check the supply pressure into the unit to make sure the pipe sizing had been done correctly or to make sure there was no blockages or in, in the pipeline to reduce the supply pressure. If the supply pressure was correct, uh, the control is faulty and you need to get another control. Um, always check the supply pressure from that other test point uh, to make sure. Now, I just to disconnect the uh, disconnect the manometer, uh, turn the control, turn the unit off, and turn the gas valve off. Disconnect the manometer. Insert the test point screw. Now, relight the appliance. As shown here, so the main burner is on. And then you soapy bubble test it. You need to make sure you soapy bubble test that test point screw because the same as the gas valve, if you don't test it now, it'll go untested and if it's leaking, it'll leak forever. You also need to make sure the main burner is going because if the main burner isn't going, that test point screw isn't going to leak because there's no pressure behind it. From that point, you can remove the bonding straps and the uh, job's done. Okay, this is the uh, Eurostack control that's out of the storage hot water service. Uh, this is looking at the front of it. Here is the pilot light tube going to the pilot light. Here's the thermocouple lead. And here is the actual thermocouple. Here's the inlet to the uh, to the appliance, to the valve. And here is the outlet going to the main burner. This part here is part of the thermostat. This is the bulb of the liquid bulb thermostat. Uh, the bulb there, and you can see the thin tube there, which is the uh, the tube going back to the bellows inside the appliance, inside the valve. Uh, the two test points, like okay, supply pressure and burner burner pressure, are there. Uh, so when you first start the control, you, you push the push the knob down and hit the hit the sparker. This allows gas to flow through the pilot tube to the pilot light, which then is ignited by the by the sparker. This in turn heats a thermal couple. In inside the thermal couple, there's two dissimilar type of metals. Uh, when they when they're heated together, it causes a, it it uh, generates millivolts. The millivolts travel back through the thermal couple lead. Back to the valve, which in here there is a there is a magnet. When the uh, once a milli, once there are enough millivolts generated, this magnet activates and holds down part of the valve. So when you let your finger off that button, uh, it allows uh, full flow gas to flow through to the main burner from the point there. Uh, this this white wire here is a is a thermal fuse. It's um. For some reason, if and and that that uh, on the end of that, there is a there is a fuse that goes inside the hot water service alongside this alongside the bulb. So if for some reason the uh, the valve mucks up and the hot water service gets hotter and hotter and hotter, the uh, that that uh, fuse will actually melt, and all that is is just running in circuit with the thermal couple. So it uh, so the millivolts are coming up through there, running up one of those wires, going to the fuse, and then running back. If that fuse burns out, uh, the circuit's tripped, and uh, the millivolts stop getting to the magnets, and the the uh, the whole thing shuts down. The magnet stops working, the whole thing shuts down.